I guess I'm a little bit curious about this story here where apparently a person who identifies as a man decided to identify as a woman to break a bench pressing world record in like a particular division. I don't even know if it's a world record. No, it's not. Um, it's a it's a record inside of the Alberta women's whatever. Like, who cares about women, right? No. Um, and I guess they did it in front of a trans powerlifter. Um, so let's just watch this. Let's see what we got here. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to cover this story today. It's pretty amusing, and it's a man standing up for women's sports. A real biological male standing up for women's sports, although sure. he kind of holds the record for women's weightlifting. So <laughs> let's get into it. So bearded man smashes women's weightlifting record held by trans lifter. So the record was previously held by a trans woman. And this guy was like, you know what? I'm going to prove a point and show how ridiculous this is. Yeah, I mean, listen, here's the thing. I'm a nice guy. I like to be a nice guy. All I'm going to say is there, I don't think, well, outside of this guy, but he's doing it to prove a point. There's no trans person who is identifying as trans so that they can have an unfair advantage. They're tr trans people just want to live their authentic selves. And I can understand and respect that. But there are certain areas where we need to have like a conversation about it. Right. So, for instance, when it comes to relationships, your partner should be able to know if you're trans. I don't think that that's a hot take. Right. You should be able to know that. Um, when it comes to your doctor you have to tell your doctor because obviously you know if you're a trans woman you still have a prostate you know um and you got to get that checked on and when it comes to like sports i think that's another area too because the reality is is that like a person who goes through a male puberty and then transitions after is going to have a significant advantage that's it. I don't say that to be invalidating, but we have to acknowledge the differences when it's relevant. And I think that this is one of those times where it is relevant, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. And I just want people to understand that I don't think anybody's trying to do anything like malicious. That's all I'm saying. He didn't even try in transition <laughs> or even pretend <laughs> that he's a trans woman he just said yeah i identify as a woman and it does highlight how easy it is for a man to infiltrate women's sports and dominate so not necessarily like okay so just to be clear in if this if i don't know how you'd be able to do this in this league most leagues that accept trans people and i still think that like unfortunately you're gonna have an unfair advantage you usually have to be on like hrt for like a year um, it's not something that you could do in a day. So this seems to be somewhat s exclusive to this league, just to be clear. Um, a bearded pro powerlifter entered a women's competition in Canada and smashed the record held by a transgender lifter who was watching on. The New York Post reports Avi Silberberg, the head coach for Team Canada powerlifting for more than 10 years, entered last weekend's Heroes Classic tournament in Lethbridge, Alberta, after identifying as a female. And that's all it took, apparently. When someone says they, they identify as a female, you're not allowed to question that. Sports organizations aren't allowed to question it. They're allowed to identify as a female if they choose to and compete against women. Video shared by athlete activist group, the Independent Council on Women's Sports, Icons, showed him walking up to the platform, still fully bearded and wearing a regular man's singlet. He then casually bench pressed nearly 167 kilos, beating the current Alberta women's record by almost 45 kilos. The current record, 124 kilograms, is held by trans athlete Anne Andreas. I, you know what's interesting though, as I'm watching this, it says a bearded pro powerlifter entered a women's competition in Canada and smashed a world record. Did they, it doesn't, like the language is like a little bit weird. Um, the head coach for more than 10 years entered last week. Okay, after a video sharing the athlete group, independent council of women's icons, so he casually bench pressed, beating the. See, they keep saying that he entered the women's competition and beat the record, but does that mean that they're acknowledging the record? Because it says the current record, 124 kilograms, is held by a trans athlete, Ani Andres. So it doesn't seem like they're 
going to maintain he didn't actually beat the record does that make sense like did it actually stick or did he just join as an identification and they didn't actually honor the record because so based on what this article is saying it doesn't seem like the record stuck who was seen watching silverberg while volunteering at the event andreas also holds the alberta women's record for the deadlift at 245 kilos well wow. so icons posted the video Team Canada powerlifting coach Avi Silverberg just broke the Alberta. A former record holder, trans identifying male Annie Andres ha uh, had a front. Okay, so they guess they former. Oh, maybe they did. Maybe they did overturn it. I don't like this part though. Former record holder, trans identifying male. I don't really like the language here. Um. Because I just feel like it's disrespect. I mean, like, like you say, like biological male or whatever. I don't know. Trans identity. It's their their trans woman that's a biological male whatever maybe i'm just women's bench press record much of a child in the 84 plus it just feels disrespectful it feels like it's like almost like <laughs> i don't know whatever let's keep going category of women's sports i wonder um there's like a lot of questions i don't know if i could answer or that could be answered today but um how much does this league matter I know that sounds silly because, like, again, you know, there are biological differences. But for one, this does this intentionality does seem to be just to be disrespectful. But like, would this? So I don't know how Canada works. I have a little bit of an idea of how powerlifting organizations work. Kind of, there's ones that are like taken more and less seriously. And so, how much does this particular powerlifting organization matter? I know this sounds like a really weird question, but is this like a really highly accredited league or is this just like kind of a powerlifting league for people to go in and to participate just to participate? I know it sounds weird, but for the most part, powerlifting is just about beating your own personal records. Um, and then you compete in like better powerlifting leagues if you do really well. So does this league matter? Um, okay. I mean because a trans woman should still be able to participate in powerlifting like for the most part powerlifting is just about beating your own personal records so like what does it even mean for them to be a record holder in this league you know what i'm saying i mean still they sh probably shouldn't be holding the record because they're a trans woman but they should be able to compete so how much does this necessarily matter like if this was the olympics obviously but the powerlifting is very much about beating yourself beating yourself off <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's about beating yourself. It's about going in and beating your own personal record more than anything else. And so this trans this trans woman being able to participate as a woman, like who really cares? Um, I guess the biggest question is like if she wins the competition, does she get money for the win? Because like then I could be like, yeah, that's a little shitty because those other women obviously like unfortunately they had to work harder um, to get to the same place that this trans woman did. Um. I don't know. Okay. That a man, even, you know, no, no matter what his motives are, can go and basically say they identify as a woman. That's all it takes. Does that it's not usually. In this case, it seems to be, but it usually needs to be a little bit more. That's the rules but... that they have created themselves. You're not allowed to question when somebody identifies as a woman. You're not allowed to say, hmm, really? That's bigotry. So now they've allowed anybody to come up and participate in women's sports. I don't think that it matters if you question that they're a man or a woman. That's not the part that really matters. We don't need to question whether trans women are women or trans men are men, because trans women are women and trans men are men. But we can question the potential biological advantages they have, and that's something that we should be doing. I think that the conversation should be a little bit more nuanced than, like, you don't have to invalidate a trans person's identification in order to understand that they'll have a biological advantage. And I think that's, if most people argued from that perspective of like, yeah, I get that it's a woman, but like, there are biological differences. They grew up as, they grew up, you know, through a male puberty, which gave them a significant advantage. You know, you look at the data, that would be fair. But most people I think are just saying trans bad, but. As a man, just by saying they identify as a woman and not You can compete at this APU to get into the world championship. What's the what's the next league up? Um, what's the next league up after this in this powerlifting organization? I want to read the rules on trans people in that organization. I'm curious about that. Do they have that? Is it just worlds? 
What is it called? Do you know? Because you're you're a powerlifter, so I'm just gonna ask you these questions. <laughs> you're a powerlifting woman. <laughs> Only that they're allowed to go in locker rooms. Leah Thomas was in the locker room with the female athletes. Uh, sure. So they're allowed to go into locker rooms. They're allowed to go into women's spaces just by saying they're women. We can laugh at this and say he proved his point, but the same way he just went up there, dominated a women's sporting event. It's the same way a man can say they identify as a woman and go into the locker room, go into the t bathrooms and infringe upon women's spaces. That's it. This guy clearly doesn't. I can see why some women might be upset where there are. Um, I can see why some women might be upset with a trans person going into a woman's bathroom, depending on, like, for lack of a better term, their passability. Right. Like, I can understand being a little bit up, like apprehensive um, because, you know, if you are not that passable. It could come off as a little bit threatening to women who might have, you know, who who deal with issues from men. Um, but it seems like most of the time when there is an issue like this, more than anything else, it comes from like a guy pretending to be trans and then like violating a space if it even happens at all. But OK, I understand what they're saying. Like when it comes to like locker rooms and stuff, I get why people would be like apprehensive about that and stuff. And, you know, he's clearly not a trans woman. He doesn't think he's a woman, you know, and nothing like that. He's just trying to prove a point. But likewise, a man decides that he wants to gain access to a woman's locker room, a woman's bathroom, to the mm, women's spaces, okay. that's all it takes. Making it very easy and leaving women vulnerable. So there's okay. a funny side to it, but there's also a very serious side. And this is what this ha actually highlights. As, as much as it's, you know, mocking the rules, it, he's highlighting a very serious point. Fortunately, we don't really see, seem to see that happening, or very rarely. Like there's like a one or two instances overall, of, like men weaponizing but that's more of those men's fault not the trans women's fault right who are pretending to be trans so that they can they gain access to a space so. the trans lifter won eight of nine competitions entered in the women's category over the last okay so apu who held this uh meet is part of the canadian canadian powerlifting union and international powerlifting federation so you can win a canadian national title or qualify to compete at worlds interesting okay gotcha four years icon said Four years dominating. That's it. What hope do the female athletes have to break a record? As Silverberg broke her record, Andrea stood off to the edge of the platform area, only strolling back on after the male lifter walked off. Icon said Silverberg mocked the discriminatory Canadian powerlifting union policy that allows competitors to register for events under their gender identity and expression, rather than their sex or gender, vowing no consequences for doing so. And there you go. CPU's transgender policy states an individual should be able to participate in the gender with which they identify and not be subject to requirements for disclosure of personal information beyond those required of cisgender athletes. It also states, nor should there be any requirement for hormonal therapy or surgery. Meanwhile, the union's competition registration policy states that a competitor's government issued photo identification, excluding youth lifters, must be verified during the weigh in or equipment check, including date of birth, province, and gender at all competitions. It is unclear if Silverberg presented a government-issued ID identifying him as a female or was required to. Yeah, I think that like the only really thing that they need to do is make it so that like if you're a trans woman competing as a woman, which you should be able to, you just you can't hold a record in the women's division. You know, um, that's all I would say. I know it sounds like a little bit silly, but it's like okay, you can compete as a woman. We'll like that. We'll you know. We'll let you compete as a woman. You can come in, you lift with the women, like however, whatever that means. I don't really know the specifics. But when it comes down to you breaking a record, like you're not going to be able to like hold uh, some kind of a national record or something in, in the organization because you're going to end up having an unfair advantage. Um, That would be fine, you know, but yeah, you robbing them of uh, or potentially, well, taking away that opportunity for a cisgender woman who is going to have to work harder to get to the same place as you. I think that that's unfair for them, of course. According to icons, what Avi so obviously points out is that policies allowing men access to women's sports completely remove any integrity in women's competitions. It doesn't matter how Avi expresses himself or perceives himself. He clearly does not belong in women's sports and neither does any other male, regardless of their motivation for wanting to participate. And that's it. it I mean, and I, I do stand by, if you are a good athlete, as a male, you don't bother with all this nonsense. It's only the ones that are underperforming as males that go over into women's sports. So that's the problem here with this person's video. 
that's the biggest problem. Everything else was like fine up until now, but this is the issue is that the person is transphobic. Like, what's my perspective? Hey, guys, I understand that these women, these trans women, they're just trying to live their authentic selves, but they maintain a biological advantage. And so we're going to have to have the unfortunate, like the conversation about excluding them in some capacity, which sucks because they're just trying to live their authentic self. But that's going to have a negative impact on cisgendered women. That's a fair perspective. She's just saying that people just transition because they suck at male sports. So she's going with the idea that there are this there's a, all these women, trans women are trans they're just transitioning because they want to win the sport. And that's that's just ignorant. It's just that's transphobic. Like it's fine if you don't want to validate trans people, but at least understand like the argument. That's really what it comes down to. How am I coping a little hard here? Why don't you just like explain to me what I'm coping a little hard here for? I would just like you to hear what you have to say. Um, but people aren't going through like drastic because going on hormones and dating surgeries, these aren't like easy things to do. You know, I guess let's say I let's say I was like a shitty male athlete and I was like really I really wanted to win and I decided to transition to be a power lifter. Like I would want to take my about imagine like I'd, I'd have to go on hormones that would alter my body in a way that would make me really upset. So unless I had like gender dysphoria, I'm not going to be happy transitioning. Nobody's transitioning so that they can win sports. <clears throat> That's the only real issue I have with this video. So nonsense. It's only the ones that are underperforming as males silly. that go over into women's sports. Say they identify as a woman and want to participate in women's sports. I'm sorry, that's just fact. Leah Thomas ranked 400 and something. As soon as Leah went over to the women's side, <laughs> ranked number one. And you know that doesn't go unnoticed. So we're going to get more and more of this as the years progress, unless something is done urgently. So yeah, there's a record holder. I'm I'm glad he holds the record, <laughs> but I would rather a biological female held the record. Beautiful day in Morrison, Colorado. As we get ready for Okay, we're just going to watch a South Park thing. Um, South Park bit's funny, but I don't think that we need to engage anymore with this part. Well, with that, let's get right to the action. <laughs> oh, so classic. Okay. Absolute classic. You see how scared she looked. And on a serious note, let's remember that there's a safety issue too. I personally would not want to box, wrestle, or fight in MMA against a dude. So thanks for watching. Do you think that powerlifter made okay. his point? <laughs> or do you think that, you know, it shouldn't have been necessary in the first place? Share your thoughts below. Uh, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, I think it would be nice if like the people who were criticizing some of these, because obviously this league shouldn't be allowing trans women to participate. Um, or they should be, they should be allowed, they should allow them to participate, but not be able to take um, awards from cisgender women, of course. Um, but it would be nice if the people who are criticizing this weren't transphobic <laughs> because it's one of those things where it's like, a, you know, a, a, uh, a broken clock is right twice a day. And this person, I don't think would there's I don't there's no they haven't even engaged in the material. Right. You know, thinking that somebody's going to transition just so that they can win in the medal is just silly goosery. Like you're being you're being a silly goose at that point.